Hello everyone. So we are going to start the second part of the topic distillation. So here we are going to have some more definition which are associated with the process of distillation. Then we are going to start the different components of the distillation apparatus. So what left it is the vapor pressure. So what is the vapor pressure? Simple. The vapor pressure can be defined as the pressure exerted by a vapor. I repeat, the pressure exerted by a vapor in thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phase. So, suppose there is a solid. Suppose we have a substance A, right? Now, this substance A might have some vapor, right? The pressure exerted by the vapor of substance A on the condensed substance A. Suppose A is a solid substance. Suppose A is a solid substance. Now it is volatile in nature, right? Now the pressure exerted by the vapor produced by the substance A on the substance A. Don't get confused. I am repeating. Suppose there is a sub solid substance A, right? It is having a pressure, vapor pressure, right? So now the pressure exerted by the vapor on the substance itself at thermodynamic equilibrium, it is known as the vapor pressure at a given temperature in a closed system. Suppose there is a vessel, suppose we have a bottle, right? A closed bottle. There we have put one substance A inside the bottle. Now this substance A it is volatile in nature. So the amount of the pressure exerted by the vapor produced by the substance A on the vap on the substance A itself, it is the vapor pressure. Clear? But that should be in a thermodynamic dynamic equilibrium state. Now, <clears throat> what do you mean by equilibrium? The equilibrium vapor pressure is an indication of the liquid's evaporation rate. I repeat. The equilibrium vapor pressure, which we have discussed now, of a liquid, I have discussed for a solid, right? For a liquid, the equilibrium vapor pressure, it is an indication of liquid evaporation rate. Suppose we have simple water, right? Now the rate of evaporation of the water, right? It is the vapor pressure at the equilibrium. So now the thermodynamic equilibrium. So what do you mean by the thermodynamic equilibrium? So it is the systemic study of transformation of matter and energy in a system as they approach equilibrium. So let's get into the detail. But I have told you, it is the systemic study of transformation of matter, solid to liquid, liquid to gas or solid to direct gas, right? This is the transformation. So it is the systemic study of transformation of matter and energy. Suppose a substance was initially in the solid state, it has gone to the gaseous state. What is the amount of energy you have put there? Or if the substance is initially at a solid state, then it has get converted into the liquid state from there. It has again converted into the vapor state. What is the amount of the energy you have put there? Right. The study of the transformation of the matter and the energy in system. In a system as they approach the equilibrium now what is equilibrium simple equilibrium means the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction suppose there is a system where the rate of forward reaction it is denoted by the rate at which the liquid is getting converted into vapor and the rate of backward reaction it is denoted by the rate at which the vapor is getting converted into back into the liquid so it is a equilibrium here yeah. so the word equilibrium implies a state of balance now the next concept is <coughs> azeotropic mixture or these are also known as the constant boiling mixture so what do you mean by the azeotropic mixture simple mixture of special composition azeotropic mixture will always have special component composition for example for azeotropic mixture suppose we will we need to add 5 ml of a or 2n with 2 ml of b 
means they will have a constant composition or a special composition so mixture of special composition giving minimum or maximum boiling point than the individual component i repeat mixture of special composition suppose we have added a with b now right now after composition we have after their mixing a and b has get mixed after their mixing we have got c right now this c will either have minimum boiling point or maximum boiling point then the individual component means the c will have either minimum boiling point or maximum boiling point as compared to that of a or as compared to that of b right with the minimum maximum boiling point of the component respectively so example mixture at a maximum boiling point if we want to get a mixture at a maximum boiling point we can add 20.2 ml of hcl plus 79.8 ml of water total volume is 100 ml so this is a mixture of maximum boiling point so what is the boiling point of water it is 100 degrees centigrade HCl it is same only but if we add this to the boiling point it increases it get elevated you need to cross 100 there moreover we have mixture with a minimum boiling point if we add alcohol 95.5 ml alcohol with 4.5 ml of water the boiling point will come down why the alcohol it is volatile in nature simple right so this is an example of azeotropic mixture so azeotropic mixture they are also known as the constant boiling mixture because their boiling point sometimes it reaches maximum or sometimes it reaches minimum and the overall temperature of overall boiling point of the mixture it is differ from the individual component so these are the azeotropic mixture <coughs> now let's discuss the Rao's law so what is Rao's law simple it is or it express the Rao's law it express quantitative relationship I repeat quantitative amount quantitative relationship between the concentration and the vapor pressure of the component which are present in a solution how we are going to express so as per Rao's law you need to understand this line here itself everything is there so as per Rao's law it says that the partial vapor pressure p you remember pa so the partial vapor pressure of each volatile constituent i repeat the partial vapor pressure of each volatile constituent is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure constituent multiplied by its mole fraction in the solution suppose let's take one example i have already made one example for you for your better understanding let's take this example suppose we have a mixture of two components a and b now as per the Rao's law you see partial pressure of component a in the mixture but it has a partial pressure of the component each component is equal to vapor pressure of the pure component pure constituent multiplied by its mole fraction so partial pressure of component a i repeat partial pressure of component a in the mixture is equal to partial pressure it is denoted by pa it is equal to is this equal to vapor pressure vapor pressure of the pure constituent this is the vapor pressure of the pure constituent right multiplied by this asterisk sign it represent multiplication multiplied by its mole fraction so mole fraction of a in the solution it is xa paper pressure of a in the pure state it is pa <coughs> similarly for b partial paper pressure of component b in the mixture is equal to pb which is equal to pb into or multiplied by xb where the mole fraction of b in the solution is xb paper pressure of a in the pure sorry it will be b paper pressure of b this is mistaken paper pressure of b in the pure state it is pb this is b i repeat this is b don't misunderstand it. this this is typing error this is b so the total vapor pressure of the mixture is equal to pt is equal to pa plus pb simply we have the pa and pb this is the summation this is the raoul's law <coughs> 
So let's take the example of Raoult's law in a simple diagram. So here I have represented the vapor pressure in the y-axis, right? I have represented the vapor pressure in the y-axis and the composition in the x-axis. So here we have taken two components. One it is the benzene, right? The other one it is the ethylene chloride. So let's see their partial pressure partial vapor pressure so here we have represented this ethylene chloride as the pb the total pressure of ethylene chloride it is equal to or it has been designated with this sign so this sign it is equal to pb pure vapor, or you can say vapor pressure the pure state into the xb xb it is the mole fraction of the b right similarly here for benzene this is A. PA is equal to PA into XA. So now the total vapor pressure which we have got, this is of this solution, this is in between the vapor pressure of the B and here the vapor pressure of the A. So the total vapor pressure it is designated here. So this is or this system the composition of benzene along with ethylene chloride it represents a proper follow means proper Rouse law following example now <coughs> there are some sort of deviation sometimes positive deviation takes place sometimes negative deviation takes place and this positive deviation from the Rouse law or the negative deviation from the Rouse law it generally takes place in real solution regarding which we have already studied in our first class right in the first or previous slide so what is a positive deviation so in some liquid system let me show you the graph so in some liquid system the total vapor pressure it is greater earlier it was same only right but in some liquid or system or composition the total vapor pressure it is greater than the sum of the partial pressure of the individual component so here the total vapor pressure is greater it is also shown here also see it is elevated from this general means usual line this vapor pressure it is elevated which is shown in the dotted line right here also it is elevated this is shown in the dotted line so here the total vapor pressure it is more example benzene and ethanol if you are going to add benzene and ethanol you are going to get positive deviation from the Rouse law and this differ and they generally differ in their polarity length of hydrocarbon chain as well as degree of association so what about negative deviation here what will happen earlier the paper pressure was more here the paper pressure will come down it will come down so in the negative system the total vapor pressure is lower than that of the sum of the partial pressure of individual component here you see total vapor pressure it is low as compared to the sum of the individual component for example this type of solution you will get when you are going to get or you are going to mix chloroform with the acetone and it generally occurs due to the formation of hydrogen bonding salt formation in even hydration so just remember positive deviation it takes place due to different in their polarity see benzene is an organic solvent right whereas ethanol it is also an organic solvent whereas the ethanol it is quite polar in nature length of the hydrocarbon chain see benzene is having a bigger hydrocarbon chain as compared to that of the ethanol and degree of association ethanol it can easily associate due to presence of the hydrogen bonding right similarly why negative deviation takes place due to the hydrogen bonding number one salt formation sometimes they form the salts and even sometimes they get hydrated clear so let's see <coughs> distillation assembly so what is the distillation assembly so this is the general distillation assembly this is known as the steel steel but here we have shown it as a distillation flask this is the source of heat the liquid is put here it will get vaporized it will come here it this liquid will pass through this condenser in this condenser liquid or air will be moving which is having a lower temperature so they will be moving here so once this vapor will reach this place the vapor will again get converted into liquid and it will be collected here so this is a simple distillation apparatus or laboratory scale distillation apparatus just see 
so steel what is a steel steel is simple it is a vaporizing chamber this is the steel and it is used to place the material to be distilled so still it can be defined as a vaporizing chamber where we are going to keep those things which are supposed to get heated right so the steel is heated by a suitable means of means so this steel will be heated by suitable means here we have shown it shown this with a flame sometimes mantle can be used as heating metal can be used right so this steel is heated by suitable means for vaporization of the volatile constituent which are present in this liquid right next on the laboratory scale generally we use the round bottom flask which is also known as the rpf which is generally made up of the glass now what is the reason behind simple the round bottom flasks are used as because to see the progress of the distillation as because through this glass we can see the liquid the volume of the liquid whether it has increased sorry it will never increase but whether it has remained unchanged or the amount of the liquid has come down or it has decreased next a condenser is attached to the steel see here a condenser is attached to the steel right by giving some appropriate join and a trap is inserted between the distillation flask and the condenser so you can see that this is a trap which will actually trap the vapor from this steel to the condenser right so let's see condenser so what is a condenser condenser is an equipment which is used to condense the vapor right so the condenser it is always kept cooled by using circulating water or air through the jacket right so what are the different types of condenser that are used see these are the different types of condenser they have different names we'll go through so first of all <coughs> we have the single surface condenser so single surface condenser we have defined example number one it is the straight tube this is also known as levic this is a straight tube condenser this is an example of a bulb tube see the tube is having bulb bulb like structure this is a bulb tube this is a spiral type it is having a spiral pipe right this is a coil type right apart from that we have double surface condenser also we have the multi tubular condenser also so this is a double surface condenser lucas it is generally used we generally have this in our laboratory it is lucas tube so this is the lucas it is a double surface condenser so this condenser is connected to the receiver through a suitable adapter now what is the receiver or how the receiver is working so receiver generally the work of the receiver is to collect the distillate what is the distillate means the vapor which has now condensed back into the liquid by the condenser it will be now collected by the receiver right so this receiver they are generally made up of simple flask so these are the receiver so these receivers are sometimes immersed in ice bath these receivers are sometimes immersed in ice bath to make them cool so that the volatile metal they don't get lost volatile metal matter they always have a tendency to volatize right they always have the tendency to leave the space so then receivers generally sometimes they kept in the ice so that whatever the liquid which has means give which have collected in the receivers by the condensation of the vapor they remain in the receiver itself right <clears throat> Florentine receivers are used for the separation of oil and water. So these are the Florentine receivers. The so Florentine receivers have two types. The types of Florentine receiver, number one, it is a type one, which is used for separation of oil heavier than the water. So <coughs> this is the Florentine receiver, which is used to separate the oil heavier than the water. In this type of Florentine receiver, the oil will settle at the bottom. Here we will have an outlet, we will just take out the oil and the water will remain here. And in the type 2, we are going to separate or separation of oil lighter than the water. Generally, the oil remains lighter than the water, but in some cases, if the oil is entrapping some other components also, as in some, those cases, the oil sometimes get heavier. So, here also, in the type 2, the separation of oil lighter than the water, here we are going to use this. The outlet for the oil will remain at the top, whereas the outlet for the water will remain at the bottom. Right? 
so that's all from the part two of the process of distillation thank you everyone for your patience hearing if you like the video just press the like icon you can share this video with your classmates and colleagues and for further notification from this channel do subscribe my channel once again thank you everyone